going on guys uh i just got done unhooking that yark micro channel from yesterday's video i've got it in the back of my truck here um and i'm gonna head to another service call right now because i haven't set the new one yet the reason being is because um my trailer is down my big closed in trailer that i use and i also have that little flatbed trailer that i use that i can use that i usually use just to do a connector swap out i usually use my closed in trailer on a whole system and i'll use my little flatbed for, for when i'm just swapping out a condenser you know because this is 410a so it's just a condenser swap out um but my closed in trailer the tongue is messed up so we had to cut it off and we're in the process of re-welding a new tongue on the on my big closed in trailer and my flatbed trailer is full of stuff because you know i recently moved uh to a new home and it's still full of crap that i haven't unloaded and i did not have time to unload it this morning so make a try to make a long story short here my supply house is going to deliver me the new ring condensing unit but they are making a big delivery this morning to another heat and air contractor uh with duck work a system and uh, he must be doing a new construction house uh he, they're they're taking a big load and and normally they would let me borrow their trailer that they, they actually let me borrow their trailer for the change out that i did the other day but they needed it this morning and they said well look we'll just deliver the unit to you and i know some of you saying probably thinking why don't you just put it in the back of your truck well i have the york in the back of my truck because the york is small and it'll fit in the back of my truck but the rain will not fit in the back of my truck because it's too wide and but i have a freon tower standing up right at my tailgate and you know from from my freon if i didn't have that freon tower there the ream would fit but i'm not gonna take my freon tower out just so i can fit a condenser in the back of my truck because normally i have a trailer this is the first time that i've had this situation so the supply house told me they said look we gotta go we gotta go uh drop this equipment and duck work off to this other guy we can deliver it to you after that and i said that's fine i said because uh i'll just go and hook the old unit and then i got another call i can go do so what we're going to do right now is we are going to a york package unit that i talked a little bit about yesterday at the end of the video <clears throat> with an x13 blower motor that is uh from 2010 it's out of warranty the package units only come with five year warranty on the parts and 10 years on the compressor um so uh the blower motor made it uh almost seven years which is a lot longer than some of the x13s have made it from that era uh my you know my cost on the motor was 400 bucks uh with you know freight no actually a little over 400 bucks to get it here at ups quick and that's just not going to cut it so what we have here sitting in the passenger seat is we have a 208 230 volt half horsepower uh psc motor with a capacitor we are going to install that with a fan relay and she should be fine for i mean less i mean i don't know how to say it but i mean not nearly the cost of what the x13 was going to cost her so basically what's happening is i'm in between two calls right now uh i've got the old unit unhooked i got everything ready for the new ream I'm just a matter of time. I'm waiting on the supply house to deliver the ream to me. So in the meantime, I will go do this. And, uh, you know, that, instead of just sitting around twiddling my thumbs waiting on my supplier. But anyway, so when we get to this package unit, we'll, uh, we'll show y'all how we're going to convert this thing over from uh, ECM to PSC, which y'all have seen me do... Uh, I think I've done it once on my channel, um, and of course Zach. You know Zach is Zach's the scientist when it comes to that stuff, and uh, he's got several videos on converting over. Um, this one's going to be a little tricky though because my blower motor wires are not going to reach all the way to the uh, control cabinet because it's just too far away. This is not a gas pack; it's an electric heat. 
pack. She didn't want a heat pump package unit, which I suggested, but she didn't want. But it's electric strip heat, you know, regular package unit. So I'm actually gonna have to put my capacitor and my relay in the blower compartment and utilize the X13 low voltage and high voltage wires to feed and power the relay and all that good stuff. But we'll show y'all how we're gonna do all that uh, when we get there. So uh, we'll see you guys in a minute. All right, guys, here's our York package unit with a micro channel, believe it or not. I have already changed this coil. This is the second micro channel on this one. I took the module off yesterday because that's really all that's wrong. The motor's actually good, but York does not offer just the module. ICP does, Carrier does, uh, Ream does, but York does not. So that's why we're going to take this thing out of here and go with PSC. So let me get to work on pulling this out. Okay, guys, the X13 is gone. The PSC is in place. We have a fan relay. And a capacitor we're gonna go put things in place and start doing some wiring okay guys everything's all wired up and I'll, I'll explain what I've done here I've added a single pole normally open relay so when the relay energizes the relay will close I've taken the common from the low voltage and the high speed tap from the low voltage and that's what's energizing the coil on the relay right here where my fingers are so that will energize the relay i have taken the line voltage wire the hot that used to feed the x13 and i've put it on this side of the relay and then this is my high speed tap going back to the motor i'm using high speed this yellow wire is my common from the motor which I have tied in right here to the neutral high voltage that used to feed the X13 fan motor. So what I'm gonna do now, is, and then of course I got my capacitor here. These two speeds, blue is medium, red is low, I have them capped off. I'm gonna leave things dangling here just to make sure everything is in working order. I have my ground hooked up. Uh, I'm gonna go, the customer's not home, but I'm just gonna go to the control panel and jump it out and make sure we're in good order. All right, well, it kind of freaked me out when I turned the breaker on. The blower motor came right on, but I came over here, and if I check between green and common, you can see the customer has the thermostat in the on position, which is, which is okay. Um, I'm gonna, I'm going to go in there and cut things off and then I'm going to jump things out like out here like I want. All right guys, our blower motor is operational. Uh, everything's looking good. I'll show you guys a trick. Uh, some of the new guys, if sometimes these squirrel cages don't have the uh, arrow direction. And, uh, but I know I know that this motor is supposed to turn counterclockwise because that's what the old X13 said. So I have my reversing leads here hooked up for counterclock. But if you're not sure how to do that and you're not sure if your blower motor is turning the right way, even on a split system, you can take you a piece of insulation here like that fell off of uh, the door that I have to glue back. And you just put it right here on the door. And you see how it's pulling my insulation in? See how it's... See, see, see how it's dragging it in there? That means your blower's turning the right way. Now, if it was pushing that insulation out towards me, your blower motor would be spinning the wrong way. So we know that our motor's turning the wrong, the, the right way, excuse me. So we should be good to go. Uh, it's running really smooth too. Um, I'm gonna check amps, but the door's off, but you know, I can't check it with the door on because the wires didn't reach. But again, there's our relay and our capacitor. We're running really smooth. I'm gonna burn the heat strips next for her because it is starting, it's 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 kind of like in between right now. Like, it, right now, we're using air conditioning in the daytime in Louisiana. Like right now, it's a little warm, but tonight, she's gonna need the heat because it'll cool off tonight. And, and that's just how Louisiana weather is. So I'm going to test that. Test the, we'll burn the heat strips and we'll show y'all that. Okay guys, we have the heat strips running. I can hear the sequencers clicking. 
Uh, we we go on the first leg here. So you got you got a 15k. You got one red, blue, yellow. That's five, 10, 15. We go to our first yellow one. We have 20 amps. So that's five kW. We go to the blue wire. We have another 20 amps. That's another five kW. We go to the red wire. Red. We have 20 amps. So we have a full 15 kW heat strip run. And that's what we want. All right. Well, uh, can't really ask for much better than that. What, uh, I, mean, I want to try to get inside the house, though, and, and work the thermostat and make sure everything works like it's supposed to uh, before I leave here because I got everything jumped out right now. So. But other than that, we're looking pretty good. All right, guys, well, I was able to get in the house and, uh, well, the, the customer came home. I got, yeah, I got in the house and uh, turned the thermostat, you know, did the uh, fan strictly in the home position. And of course we already had that. So I knew that was working. Put it on auto, went to cool, everything worked, went to heat, everything worked, heat strips came on, everything functioning correctly through the thermostat, which is what I wanted to see. So I was happy there. Uh, and I want to uh, clarify something uh, on the low voltage for the relay. You know, I had the common that used to feed the X13 motor. Well, the X13 motor, you know, you have speed taps, one, two, three, four, and five. Well, there was wires on every number except for number two. As York must do something a little different because I'm not used to that. Usually there's only uh, one or two wires on one, two, three, four. Usually you only have like one or two of those wires. You put one on one number for heat and one on another number for speed tap for your air conditioning. Basically what, what the, the brown or tan wire was, that was the high speed wire that went to the X13 fan motor. But anytime that thermostat called for a G signal, that that brown, if you go between common and that brown or beige wire, whatever color it was, tan, I always had 24 between those two. So I knew that that, that wire and the common would power would, would give me 24 volts of power of the relay. And sure enough, when I ran through all the functions, cool, heat, and uh, cool and heat, fan comes on fine. Even when you put the fan on, on of course, you're still gonna get a G signal. It was gonna run fine, and it did. Because you have to keep in mind that on an elect, the reason that those that these thermostats, the reason it's so critical to, you know how you have to program it, or there's a little switch that's for gas or electric. The reason that's so important is is because an electric system, the thermostat always calls for a G signal, whether you do just the fan, whether you do cooling or heating. The, the thermostat always calls for the fan. Well, that's not the case with a gas system. On a gas system, it will call for a G signal in the cooling mode, but it will not call for a G signal in the heating mode. The, the board, the furnace throws the blower motor on in the heating mode. Once the heat exchanger reaches temperature, the limit switch on the board, or the limit switch sends a signal to the board to allow the fan to come on. So. If you were to have a thermostat and leave it on electric and hook it to a gas furnace, the minute you would put it on heat, your blower motor would come on right away with your inducer. That's why it's important to do that. But that's not the case with electric, so that's why I wired it the way that I did. If that had been a gas pack, we'd have had to do it a little different. We'd have had a cool tap and a heat tap. We'd have had to, and, and we probably wouldn't have even had to use a relay. I would have just had to extend my wires and make them reach the control board. So, you know, that's that conversion, it, that's the best way to do it on an electric system. Zach has a couple great videos on converting uh, a gas pack to from ECM to PSC. But anyway, it went great. I couldn't ask for better. So I want to thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for hanging in there with me because, you know, I have been gone for a while. Um, you know, I've had some personal issues in my life which is why I, I, I had quit doing videos. I know some guys have been asking why I've been gone. I've had some personal issues and, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing okay now. I appreciate it. And some of the guys know, 
exactly what that what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to go into detail on a YouTube video. But make a long story short, everything's working out. Uh, I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm back on track, and I'm I'm doing well, and I'm in, I'm enjoying myself working again, and uh, I'm glad to be back on YouTube doing these videos. So I appreciate the support. I really do. A lot of guys have even called the phone asking where I was at. Uh, I've had Facebook messages asking if I was okay. Yes, I'm okay. Uh, I'm fine. Just having, you know, every, it happens. You know, every now and then you have some personal issues. But uh, I want to thank everybody for the support. And I'm, I just, I'm humbled that y'all wanted that, that so many of y'all were commenting and Facebooking me and texting me saying, hey man, start making videos. That means the world to me. It really, really does. Anyway, uh, okay, well, we're done with that. I'm headed back to that York Micro Channel uh, from the video yesterday. The supply house called me. They have delivered the unit. It's sitting there waiting on me. We're going to go install it, and we should be able to video it. So that'll be the next video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next one.